In the year 1964, a Soviet mathematician by the name of Pyotr Ufimtsev publishes an article for scientists and mathematicians around the world. Pyotr basically explains in this article how airplanes are picked up by radars and how it is possible for you to hide yourself from a radar system. Pyotr continues and says, if an airplane wants to keep itself hidden from a radar system, it needs to have sharp edges and the size of the aircraft does not matter as long as the edges are executed perfectly. Before this article was published, most engineers were sure that you can't have a large aircraft that's stealth. But Piotr proved them wrong when he published this. And because of that, after this article was published, most aircraft engineers, manufacturers around the world got busy to figure out if this theory is correct or not. In another way, these scientists were surprised because the article came out of the Soviet Union. It's 1964 in the middle of the Cold War, and information like this is highly valuable and it's extremely surprising for a Soviet scientist to publish this to the world. But either way, most engineers, especially the Americans ones, got to work to figure out if it's correct or not. In this year, the US has already gotten the best stealthy weapon in the world, the SR-71 Blackbird, which we've made a video on. One of the main reasons that the SR-71 is so stealthy is because how high of an elevation it flies at. So the US government wanted a stealthy plane that's like the SR-71, but also a bomber, and on top of that, a fighter. The SR-71 is a spy plane, it doesn't even have weapons on it. So for the US government to request something like that was insane. And since the Pentagon was satisfied with the Blackbird, they ordered it to the same company, and Lockheed got to work. At first, the engineers at Lockheed were surprised and didn't know where to begin because their request was so insane. You have to know that it's 1964, the technology is nowhere near today's, but they still began working. The main people in charge of this project were these two gentlemen, Dick Scherer and Dennis Overholster. Not only were these two familiar with Piotr, but they had already began testing this theory and they wanted to design an aircraft based on that theory. After a lot of testing and experimenting, Dick Scherer and Dennis realized that Piotr's theory was correct. If an aircraft has very sharp edges and it lacks round edges like older aircrafts, it actually could be hidden in radars. They also realized that the exhaust of the aircraft cannot be big and circular like other aircrafts. It has to be thin and long, so it doesn't put out an insane amount of heat in one section. But designing an aircraft like this and making it efficient was not easy. So they continued this for 13 years straight. And finally, on January 1977, Lockheed had a prototype to show the US government. They also gave the aircraft a name, F-117 Nighthawk. Testing this aircraft took a very long time because it was a completely new design and it was new to the aircraft world. They worked on it for four years straight until they got it right. And in 1981, the F-117 was finally ready to go to work. This project was highly classified and nobody really knew that the US government is designing an aircraft like this. And that is why even when in 1981 the F-117 is ready to go, they never release a video or announce that they've made something like this. Either way, the first ever stealth bomber and fighter was ready to hit the battle. This insane piece of engineering was now in the pilot's hands for them to continue testing on it. But the pilots weren't a huge fan of this aircraft, and some of them even gave it a name, Wobbly Goblin. Basically, it does not fly smoothly and it shakes all over the place. Modern aircraft engineers say the F-117 was lacking sensors, specifically stability sensors all over the aircraft, something that was not available in this era 
because this aircraft was designed in the 1970s. Another huge problem was that the F-117 had smaller engines than any other aircraft the US Army had. So it was much slower and it had an approximate speed of around 1000 kilometers an hour. And for a fighter, that's extremely slow. The F-14 was designed in the same era as the F-117, but that had a speed of 2500 kilometers an hour, two and a half times the Nighthawk. No Air Force is gonna send the F-117 over the other fighters they have to battle someone. It's stealthy, but if it drops bombs, since it's so slow, it cannot escape other fighters and the enemy could catch up to it. But either way, the F-117 was ready and they built 64 of them. Seven years after it was ready in 1988, it was finally shown to the public and the world by Ronald Reagan, the president of the US at that time. By showing this aircraft, Ronald Reagan wanted to show the world how advanced the US is, and we can design an aircraft bomber and make it stealthy. The first time the F-117 entered battle was in 1991 during the Persian Gulf War, and it was sent there to bomb Iraqi troops. After the Persian Gulf is over, the next battle it enters is the Yugoslavian War in 1999. But at that war, an S-125, a Yugoslavian missile, is able to shoot down the F-117. You could say after this incident, the F-117 wasn't as cool as it used to be. It's also interesting to note that the Yugoslavians did not see this airplane in the radar. It was seen by ground troops and they informed the troops up ahead to shoot the plane down. In 2003, the F-117 was used in battle for the very last time during the American and Iraq war. After this, the Pentagon realized that the F-117 isn't as useful as it used to be. In this era, the US military had access to the F-22, the greatest fighter aircraft of all time. They have the B-2, the stealthiest and most advanced bomber of all time. And at this time, the F-35 was being manufactured and almost ready to go. So it was time to retire the F-117 Nighthawk. They only retired the F-117 in terms of combat. So that means they still use it for testing. So that is why you recently see videos of the F-117 being restored and repainted because they want to use it again. Technology like this was always advancing and that was because of the competition in the world. The Americans wanted to build something way more advanced than the Russians and the Russians wanted to answer back and build something more advanced than the Americans and it kept the competition going where the whole world is advancing forward. But in recent times, a race like this has stopped. Like for example, the Americans realized that they don't need anything better than a B-52 because there's no one else that could top it. So in terms of innovation, we have slowed down. Do you guys think it's better to have it like this or having a permanent cold war? Please comment.